Audra at Home is filmed in front of a live Pitbull audience. Good morrow to all my queerdos, weirdos, and brohos. Welcome to TLDR, a new series on my channel where I ask the question, did this TV show go on too long? And I do so without going into a long uh, in-depth, or I hope a long in-depth thing. Who knows? Listen, I'm no friendly space ninja. I cannot script to save my life. I don't have that kind of preparation. However, I'm Audra, if you're new here forgot to tell you that and uh, I need to do something with my hands so I'm holding this mic in the hopes that having something to do with my hands will give me life that is that is what I'm hoping you know I have to I flippity flop I flippity flop today for the first ever inaugural episode I'm gonna be talking about charmed N not this one this one So for those of you who do not know, Charmed, pause. First of all, past me, you look amazing. Uh, but I was so excited about doing this video that I completely forgot a key element, which was to tell you, those who don't know, what Charmed is. Charmed was a show about three witches. It started in 1998, and I believe it ran through until 2004. And it was about three sisters who were witches, the Charmed Ones, the most powerful witches in all of the land. And it went on for eight seasons, showing all of the hijinks that they went through in their lives as being witches. It was rebooted in 2018, this time with a Latin cast. Sort of. So I'm going to kind of do a quick rundown or maybe not a quick rundown. We're going to see. Listen, this is the first one. Who knows how it's going to go? Well, I hope. Anyways, I'm listen, the, the makeup look you've either already seen, probably not, or will see in an upcoming video. How I got here, we don't know. Anyways, Charmed was rebooted in 2018 with a Latin cast and it was supposed to be very, very exciting. There are multiple problems with this. The first is that they sew the writers and producers so eagerly, even though they were from the original Charmed, wanted nothing to do with the original Charmed that I feel like they really mucked it up. So first and foremost, if I feel like they missed a huge, huge, huge opportunity to have a Latin cast and then just still be doing white girl magic. I said it. I found it so odd that like, what was the point? And this is one of those things where I'm like, why would you make a woke rebate remake? Those are hard to say back to back, but why would you make a woke remake of a show and be like, it's gonna be Latins and da da da. And then where, where, where is the Latin magic? Where are their spells? You had this opportunity to have true brujeria and you did not use it. I, I didn't really know what to do with myself. I was actually kind of excited because I loved Original Charmed. I loved Phoebe, I loved Paige, I loved Prue, I loved Piper, I loved them all. They were iconic. And I know people have their issues with Shannon Doherty, but I had a huge crush on Shannon Doherty. I had a stupid song that I made up about her. I'm not gonna sing it here today because first of all, I am sober and that doesn't happen when I'm sober. Anyways, I used to have a song I loved. I adored Original Charmed. I loved how much fun it was. I loved the girl power. It was a good time. I get that it wasn't, you know, diverse, but I'm not mad at that, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it was a show about a bunch of witches. And honestly, for me, I could still put myself in any one of their places because they weren't like um, so white in the sense of, I didn't feel like what they were doing revolved around them being white. And therefore it was very easy for me to decide which sister I would be, you know? Uh, and it used to be Prue and then it was Paige. So it was very easy for me to put myself in their, in their places. But because of that, the next problem we run into is the pacing. It's trash, absolute hot garbage. I, <laughs> listen, the number one problem with this is that because they are essentially doing the original Charmed, and I shit you not, beat for beat in, I believe, four seasons for the new one, four, four whole seasons, so as I was saying before I rudely interrupted myself with nonsense, I feel like uh, when you're watching this, it is beat for beat down to the love story between Piper and Leo. They have that between Macy and Harry. And I just didn't get it. Instead of P names, they have M names now. 
<laughs> and uh, which I just, I was baby. But the thing is, when you are trying to basically beat for beat cover the same show just with a Latin cast in four seasons and trying to cover what they did in eight, hot garbage hot garbage really and truly it, it's quite terrible in multiple ways because you truly never get to know most of the characters on this show i didn't even feel like i knew them by the time the show ended i was just like all right you know what i mean like it ended i still can't even really i don't all know their names i know that there's macy and kayla macy's dead and kayla's the newest one the two that have been on the show the longest i have no idea what their names are no idea let's let's see if i can look that up because you know this is the kind of video i'm doing where i look things up as i talk about it i found it very very interesting how difficult it really mel and maggie there we go how difficult it was for me to even remember their names this is how i like forgettable these characters are and a lot of that has to do with again trying to cover the exact same thing they covered the same ground what's the point of a reboot if you're covering the same ground it's weak and it's sad and it's embarrassing like i'm watching it the whole time just being like didn't they already do that didn't they didn't they already do didn't they already do this Bo? did they already do this Bo? Bo says yes I didn't feel like I was watching a new show. I didn't feel like I was watching Charmed be brought back to life in a joyful way. Going backwards to them having a Latin cast, the diversity here is trash. And here's what I'm gonna say, listen, I know I am not Latin, I'm aware. However, I do live in Texas and I see a lot of Latins, sometimes called Hispanics down here. And uh, uh, they're all different shades. <clears throat> They're not all light skin. They're not all light skin. They're not all light skinned. So I found it very odd that uh, all of them are light skinned. So at this point, it's like you may as well have just cast white witches, which you did. It seems once again, people are having a difficult time between understanding ethnic ethnicity and race. <laughs> Wow. So what happens is you still have white charmed. It didn't change. Everyone is very light skinned uh, or mixed, which is also in their minds equal to light skinned. It, it kind of boggled my mind because I was watching it just going, what was the point in this? Mel, Macy, Maggie, even their names don't denote any cultural history. Like that's the other thing. There's no cultural reason for them to be Latin if you're not gonna pull in any of their culture. It felt like, okay, so what? I just, I didn't, it didn't make sense to me. After four seasons, I finished the whole thing and I was like, you literally could have done this with white women. And you did, obviously, you did. But you could have not even had them be Latin at all. You could have not had them be ethnically Latin at all. Because it made no difference to the show, period, point blank. And I felt like watching it as well there wasn't a lot of cultural diversity was there some kind of like there were people who might be a gender there was even a trans cousin and even that storyline they handled very very poorly and listen i'm gonna tell you again i'm not trans okay i i am just a member of a minority group multiple minority groups i'm queer i'm black female I'm not binary there's a lot going on all right but the point that I'm going to make is all of us in minority groups want to just be seen on television as normal, as just there. We don't want our stories revolving around our identity. And it's very, very annoying that that's exactly what they did. They wrapped her story up so much in her being trans that again, I don't know her name. I don't know what she did really did aside from make a mess of a few things and at some point she comes back and she does something helpful i don't really remember but the, her entire identity in this show is just her being trans the end her being trans and wanting to get powers the end 
her being trans and being messy to try to get her powers. The end. You spend more time with her and her transness than you do spend time with her just being a witch. And I feel like for me, again, if you're trans, let me know in the comments below how you feel about this. I just know as a black person uh, and a minority in general, I want black people and all minority people to be able to show up in a show and just be a person on the show. For instance, in literally every single show, if there is a black person there, there is inevitably going to be a story about them being what? From the hood. About them what? Being the first and only person to graduate college and or high school. What? Are, is they going to encounter a racist? You're damn right they are. And it just like to a level like I watch shows a lot of times to escape. So when you're making it obviously clear in your show the whole time, trans, they're trans. I don't feel like it's a good storyline. She didn't have a very good, healthy, meaty storyline that made me want to follow her as a character and as a person, you know? It made me be more like, okay, it's you were getting hit over the head by wokeness in this and that's my other problem with it is that it was very rare that situations just happen by contrast in original charmed they would run into things where they would feel like maybe there was misogyny happening or whatever and they would confront it head on but it wasn't like this i feel like in this it's very much like somebody comes and tries to like shut down the school when they're talking about like trans issues and just not not for nothing, but people experience this in their real lives when we come to a show like Charm specifically for escape. So we want to escape. We want to escape. Our lives are miserable enough. Allow myself to interrupt myself in that I don't think that I was articulating what I was trying to say as clearly. I enjoy very much they had a trans character on the show. I really wish that they had changed her journey to get magic into something else because they introduce her like this. And how come we've never heard of you? You probably remember me by my dead name. I was assigned male at birth, but that was just a biological mix up. And for me, that introduction was more than enough to continue the story. I think that it would have been better if it was more about the fact that the magic had found her when she was young because the magic always knew who she was. You see what I'm saying? A little tiny tweak and it would have been perfect. And the story would not have been about her being trans, but about her being a woman finding her magic, period. Representation done right. So the thing is, I wanted more magic is what I'm getting to next. See, this is all over the place. It's a little romp. Uh, I wanted more magic. I, I'm i gonna put it to you this way. When I was talking about earlier, see, we're going in circles again. When I was earlier talking about how it was very difficult because the pacing doesn't make sense. When you compare the original Charmed and how they got their powers to this Charmed, there are, li it's literally, episodes of Piper, Prue, and Phoebe learning to control their powers. And anytime they got a new power, it took them time to control each power. It was fun, it was exciting, and it caused all kinds of mayhem and chaos, which I enjoyed. And I'm sure if you liked Original Charm, Two, you like that as well. You got to watch them attempt and work with trying to control their powers and figure out how to use them and not blow up their house. In this one, New Charmed doesn't have that. It feels like they have powers and then they just know how to use them. The end. There's no real struggle. They don't really have any difficulties trying to get those powers to work. They just work. They just know how to use them. Even though they didn't even know they were witches, boom, they're good at it. And I feel like that takes away from it for them to just sit there and be like, I didn't know I was a witch and now boom, I know my, I know how to use my powers. And they just keep getting new powers and they instantly know how to use those as well. There's no conflict, I feel like, with their powers as there was in Original Charmed. And that was part of the story. Part of the story was their sisterhood. Part of it was them learning how to use their powers. And most importantly, it was learning for them them to figure out how to live their lives while also being witches. And this Charmed had none of that charm.
You knew it was coming. You knew at some point I was going to do that. I was going to do it, but it didn't. They knew how to use their powers pretty instantaneously, and it didn't have any impact on their lives, really. Being witches, what didn't seem to be affecting their real lives in any way, shape, or form. I mean, occasionally it did, but most of the time, not at all. And I feel like a lot of that is because they forgot another core thing, which was the innocence. Oh my God, the innocence. Okay. Original Charmed, every episode, there was an innocent for them to save, right? They all had an innocent, not all of them each, but there is an innocent per episode that they needed to work to save from some new evil or some monster or some demon, right? And that is what made each episode fun because you got to learn more about the sisters, more about their relationships, and sometimes like hijinks would ensue if some kind of weird spell was put on them or whatever, right? And so we got to learn about them through them saving an, an innocent. Each sister would learn something more about themselves per episode, little things that they didn't know, learn things about their relationships with each other, and that made the show fun. But New Charm doesn't have that. In fact, there's very rarely an innocent ever. And it's hard to drive a, pro a plot along when there's no no one for them to save. In fact, one of the worst things that they do is they continuously have different big bads. And I know I hate to keep comparing it to original charm, but we got it because that one exists and this one wouldn't exist without that one. So a big thing about original charmed is that they did not have a new big bad every season. All right. They had the source for like, I feel like four seasons before they finally defeated the source. All right. It was like, it was a big deal. And I felt like that was an important part of it, right? The source was like this big benevolent evil under the ground doing things and sending folks out for them and sending demons and all different kinds of creatures to disrupt the charmed ones, to kill the charmed ones, all of this and all of the machinations that he had was like, ginormous and most importantly they would constantly be trying to figure out what the source was going to do and how they were going to defeat the source right this was a running thing it was a constant so you always had this one constant which is that they had the source that they were trying to battle and then you had all of the other innocents that they were trying to save then you layer that on top of their sisterhood and layer that on top of their real lives then you have a show with stakes and interest with this it was just like hey there's a bad guy every season beat him up bah. and it just didn't it like when they were dead i was like so that's it so that so that's all so so much so that when macy dies in season three i'm like all right then i thought the show was over at that point honestly and i was kind of hoping it would be and i'm talking about new charmed at this point when macy dies in season three i was just kind of like all right i mean it is what it is they even tried to copy the Piper and Leo, which I brought up before, the Piper and Leo relationship. And that's between Macy and Harry. It's not done well. It's not um, at all. There's no suspense. There's no buildup. There's no interest. The reason that Piper and Leo's story is so freaking epic is because they had to fight against all odds to get together. And when they finally do get together, they still find ways to snatch Leo out from underneath her, you know, the white lighters, the elders, there's like a hierarchy. And I felt like in this one, it was just like these three girls running amok, doing magic, saving no one. And it really is never more evident in New Charmed how little they actually saved anyone that we saw for the most part. Then in season four, when they suddenly have like a weird cell phone network that has its alt-right magic kingdom news channel. I don't even know how to explain it. It's in some seashells, I guess. Weird. Anyway, which we've never seen before. It just appears in season four. That again, again, pacing. And you realize like all these magical creatures are super mad because they're like the charmed ones don't care about us. They only care about precious witches. And here's the thing. When I'm watching it, I'm like, they didn't care about none of y'all. They didn't care about witches. They didn't care about magical creatures. They were quite literally only about themselves. And like, I get why the magical world was mad, but it just didn't even, I was like, when did they save an innocent? Like, what have they been doing other than saving their own asses 
for all of these seasons. It's just absolute trash. Like it just, wow. It The whole thing, I didn't even realize that I'd even finished three seasons when I finished them. And when I finished it, I was like, do I remember anything I watched? The answer is no, I didn't. I didn't remember anything I watched. They try to be like, oh, well, you know, Mel is gay, Mel's a lesbian. And I'm like, okay. And and they treat that fairly, you know, like they like they would, they, they like they should have treated their trans character. Like that's just a part of who she is and like leave it there and then have her actually have something to do. But they didn't have anything to do other than to be like, we're shoehorning a trans character in here. They're gonna talk a lot about being trans and then uh, they're gonna have some, a little bit of magic and they're gonna come by every so often when we need a magical, you know, get out of jail free card. It it was so bad. I I don't have a lot of positive notes on New Chimed. I wanted to because every time it felt like the show was going to stand up on its own feet, it just it fell right back on Old Charmed. And I can't even believe that I forgot to bring this up when I was just talking about it. But you know how I was saying it's beat for beat what happened in Old Charmed? They even have the dead sister. I know I said that Macy died, but Macy dies and what do they do? They bring in Michaela, also known as Kayla. And I just am like, y'all really couldn't think of another storyline. You did the exact same one. You remember Prue died and then they brought in Paige. Same thing. It's baffling, baffling, which made it just impossible to enjoy and what's really weird about it is like in old charmed a huge deal was made out of humans not seeing magic not knowing magic exists because humans can't handle magic obvi humans cannot handle magic if humans could you know get magic it would be very dangerous because we all know we're living in the human world right now we see how awful humans are <laughs> that's depressing anyways we live in a world that's terrible for humans to have magic in the, in both, well, for sure, in Original Charmed. But when we get to New Charmed, that just doesn't seem to be it. And in fact, one of the main stories that I feel like it's season two is that humans do know magic exists. They do now. And what's weird is in season four, when they find the new witch, uh, like nothing's done then, other than of course the witch is stopping it. And then it's just like, new, new villain, season three. Or, all right, I guess, thanks. But <laughs> in season four, we're meant to believe that there is like an entity that shows up when humans see magic. Huh? Excuse me? Where, uh, where, where was that uh, person before? Where was that magical entity before when humans were trying to steal magic? Uh-huh. Nowhere? Okay, just checking. Just checking. I so th It's very inconsistent. The New Charmed is super inconsistent. Not very good. Not very good. I The pacing is so bad, I, I didn't know what to do with myself half the time. Didn't get to know any of the characters. Harry is both attractive and hideously unattractive, all at the same time. Very weird thing. Man should always have a beard. When he takes his beard off, it's gross and it's just, it's it's terrible. Um, the sisters, I don't feel like they're sisters. They just, they literally do look like people who are uh, hanging out together uh, because they have to. I don't, I didn't get any good sisterhood out of them. It, it was odd, like when one of them died and they're trying to act sad and I'm just like, you just met her and you you didn't do a good job of giving a fuck about her. Like they were always keeping secrets from one another. And while they did that occasionally on Charmed, um, you know, like Phoebe and Cole. And they even tried a Phoebe and Cole type thing with, I think her name was Maggie, the youngest sister. They tried to do Phoebe and Cole with Maggie. No, babes. It lasted for like this, uh, that's this long. Again, I'll, that's why I keep saying the pacing is so terrible that you cannot get invested in literally any of the characters. So TLDR, did this show end too early, on time, or too late? Well, this one's a weird one. Uh, I feel like for sure it shouldn't have started, but it ended just in time, I guess. I guess we'll go with just in time. Uh, it does end with the with them going to the original Charmed House, which, what? 
They spent all this time eschewing original Charmed. And then once they realized that their show was burning in flames, they were like, we're going to pay homage now. You should have done that in the first place. So now that I'm telling you where it ends, how should they have done this show to make it good? First of all, if you're going to have Latin sisters, make sure that you are incorporating their heritage into it so that it makes sense that you made them Latin. That would be fantastic. Wonderful, even. All right. Um, I would like to feel like I am seeing something different if you wanted to make it different. Second, let's not play this weird game of um, so much wanting to stick it to the original actresses and actors of the original Charmed just because they spoke out about their poor conditions by the end. You know, let's not do that. Let's instead, let's not have them have to discover their powers. Let's have them already know about their powers. Let's have them already be charmed ones, already fighting things because every generation has a set of charmed ones. You know, that would have been great. That, that would have been fantastic. In fact, they didn't even have to live in San Francisco. You could have put them anywhere. You could put them anywhere else, you know, and had it work out. So one, make sure that they're all sisters too let's do away with the idea that a relationship between a white lighter and a witch doesn't work because obviously uh that's already been done and that was solved a long time ago so let's like move past that have them have a relationship but have other um issues come up with it three make sure you have innocence let's have innocence that they have to save because that is a great way for character growth they learned through saving their innocence and sometimes you can't save everyone right they found that out too sometimes your innocence can't be saved and sometimes it's not always someone who you would perceive as innocent as um, someone that you need to save sometimes it's the bad guy that you're trying to save Cole we couldn't save him but we tried you know what I mean we tried we tried but you know People just wouldn't give him a chance. Second chances exist. I'm so thirsty. Please hold. Four, don't rudely shoehorn in all of your SJW shit. Have it be a good connected part of the story that doesn't feel so forced down everyone's throats. You know what I mean? I, I am very leftist. I enjoy seeing characters of all walks of life, but I want them to be in there naturally. I don't want them having to fight for their rights like they do in real life because this is a show about magic, bitch, and I want some magic. And finally, have them have one, one, one bad guy. One bad guy for quite a while that they are constantly trying to battle. Uh, changing it up every season makes it very difficult to really keep the show going. And if you, it, we've learned this. The only way that that works is if your big bad is connected to the big or bad. Do you see what I'm saying? If they're not connected somehow, there's no thread pulling all of the seasons together. In fact, episode to episode to episode, not a lot for me was pulled together. And uh, finally, female menti, truly f the end. Um, if you're gonna be diverse, actually be diverse. I, I cannot tell you how annoying it is that all of these shows will say that they're being diverse and they're not, they're not. Uh, I, I'm a black person living in Texas. I see plenty of people who are Latin and just like all brown people, we're not all born the same color. You know what I mean? Parents have kids that are several several different shades. Some, some hang out in the sun more than others. Some don't sun at all. Some are just lighter skinned, some are deeper skinned. It would have been nicer to have like a good representation of that instead of having everybody be half black by the time y'all started even trying to make them look ethnically like they were, it was late. It was, it was really late in the game, allowing the hair to be curly, which you should have done in the first place because they do have curly hair and there's nothing wrong with curly hair. Uh, just be diverse if you're going to be diverse because otherwise the show is fine. If you just want to have it be white women, have it be white women. None of us care. I, I really, I honestly could, I don't care. It could have been all white women. I would have been fine with that. But I do hate it when y'all come out here and like, we're going to be diverse and you're not. So, you know, um, hopefully at some point uh, they, they might try this again. I'm sure they will. It's the CW. They, they do everything as many times as they can. Uh, but perhaps this time they will take some notes and realize that you can't make a reboot show and then just like not even pay homage to the original. Um, stop trying to stick it to people. It was, it was a whack ass idea to do so. I would have loved to have seen the original witches show up on this. That, that, ah, oh, like an alternate universe. Cause that would have been cool, you know? God, it would have been so cool. 
Anyways, that is it. That's the video. If y'all enjoy this style of video, please make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. This is my uh, makeup and media. I do, I do makeup or I have makeup on and I talk about media. Sometimes with a mic in my hands. This is so fun. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm going to get back into it. <laughs> I'm back into closing out this video. For those of you who haven't already left, this video, like all of my videos, is sponsored by my patrons and channel members. Some of you have asked what is the difference between a Patreon uh, member and a channel member. Absolutely nothing. I just know that some of y'all do not enjoy having to get yet another app. So I made sure that you could do it on either one if you want to. The information is in the description box below. A big thank you to those of you who have recently joined. Hi, welcome. Uh, I know that at some point I, I keep trying to do movie nights and I'm so tired. I'm so tired. So I apologize. I'm going to, I'm going to try to get back in there. Listen, get in there. Good. All right. Remember, it costs zero, zero dollars to be kind. It's so good for your soul because honestly, if you don't take care of it, I am going to come for yours. I'm going to eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dessert. And I might give it back to you, but it will be severely damaged. And it will also have like the same wild energy that I have. And I don't think you want that. It's a lot. It's a lot. Anyways, XOXO. Gothic girl.